Yeah, to be honest, I've been sat here for a while trying to figure out how to even start this video. But as most of you know, I have mentioned several times throughout the last few videos that my room is in desperate need of decluttering and reorganizing. It's been a mess and it's kind of grating on me a bit. Now, do I really want to start doing this at this very moment? Um, no, I don't. I'm tired. I just got back from work. My stomach's full of dinner. And I would really just like to vegetate on my couch right now. But, you know, if I keep doing this every time, my room is never going to get done. So, you know what? Let's just, let's just take it little by little. Maybe I'm, like, trying to do, figure about doing too much in what, at one time. I can't even get my words out right. I wasn't planning on buying any extra pieces of furniture for my room in terms of like shelving and, and things like that for extra storage. But of course that didn't happen. I actually ended up buying a small accent table for the top of my stairs. And that area had been plain for quite a while, actually since I moved here. So I actually have that in place right now. But what triggered that purchase was the fact that I finally ended up framing my Haunted Mansion puzzle and ended up hanging it at the top of the stairs. And I figured, you know what, this area is just too plain. Let's put something else here. So I put another frame that my husband got me for Christmas that was Haunted Mansion related. And I figured, you know what, this is the perfect time to finally get that little table that I've been wanting to get. And you know what's even better? It's got a couple of small shelves in it. Not big enough to put puzzle boxes, but there are a couple of things that I know I can put in there that can open up some more space for me in my room. Which now that I think about it, is probably not the greatest idea in the world because then that'll just mean that I'm gonna probably end up buying more puzzle sets that I don't need. But who cares? Anyways, let me show you what I have planned so far. So as I mentioned, here's the top of the stairs and here's the little accent table, which is not really that little. It's actually pretty big, bigger than I was expecting to get. But here is the glorious Haunted Mansion puzzle. But doesn't that look so much better in a frame? I mean, I know I did say that I was going to put glue sheets on it, but you know what? I figured I had some spare cash from my work bonus and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to splurge on a picture frame for this because I think it deserves it, especially since I completed it twice and it was a nightmare. And then what I want to do is probably on these shelves here, I have some haunted mansion pieces that I could probably put there. I don't want to put too much because I hate dusting things on shelves. But down here, I'm thinking, even though it may not be big enough for puzzle boxes, well, actually it might now that I think about it. Actually, no, no, I don't want puzzle boxes here yet i am thinking what i could put here instead is maybe some books and i'm talking about books from this bookshelf here now these here is from my collection but i'm thinking maybe move these to one of the shelves on that accent table and then i'm not sure yet about the other shelf up here these are my husband's books I'm hoping he'd get rid of them at some point so I can have more space on my sh on the shelf here, but, but don't tell him I said that. But yeah, I mean, aside from figuring out this madness here, I mean, that's, that's a bit of a mess going on there. I mean, gosh, don't look at my room. I mean, I'm saying that I'm showing you my room. But anyways, yeah, this room is a mess. I, it needs fixing. It needs organizing. That's an embarrassment up there because that is just mainly... <laughs> Empty puzzle boxes, and I don't know why I have them still, but that needs sorting out. These two shelves here, I'm not sure if I'm going to combine them yet or if I'm just going to leave them as they are. This this is madness in the shelf here. That sewing machine, I don't know why it's still there. I have this pile here. You know, th these shelves, they're not even the way they used to be anymore. I've literally just, as I've collected more boxes throughout the months, I, I just put them in empty spots. There, there's no, there's no organization here. We're going to work on this. And then, you know, this is the Christmas haul. That's the thrift haul that I actually just filmed right before filming this video. And then here I have like a hidden mess. These are puzzles that I'm considering donating. This is an extra picture frame that has an image, a Beauty and the Beast image that I need to figure out where I'm going to put. And, oh, this actually was sent to me in my P.O. box. Let's open this. I've been meaning to open this one for a while, and I keep 
forgetting because it's been in this pile of other things here. This is, this is why we need to take care of this. And this was sent to me from March L. I'm not going to put the whole name out there, but Marge, oh wow, Marge sent me a gradient crypt puzzle. And this is awesome because the crypt that I have is the gray one, which I have been saying, you know, I've been procrastinating about that because who the heck wants to do a gray puzzle? I mean, I love the color gray, but you know, not for like a puzzle image. I mean, that's not even an image really. But everyone has been saying so much about trying to complete a gradient version of it because it's more colorful, obviously. It's, it's a much nicer thing to look at. So I'm really excited about this. I feel, I feel more confident about this one when it comes to the crypt puzzles. So thank you, Marge. I very much appreciate this. This is, I'm more excited about this one than that nonsense up there. But this is going to be part of my Ravensburger shelf, which needs desperate attention. So now that that box is open, we can get rid of that box and get that on the shelf as soon as it's ready. But what I think I need to do first is move the books over and kind of open up another shelf so that I can, you know, kind of brainstorm a little bit better how I'm gonna go about reorganizing all these shelves. I must say, I love when I get productive with house projects like this. And when I do things like this, I always make sure to have a duster with me so that I can tackle another chore in the process. Because why move dusty items to a new, already clean area? All right, so this is a good start. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna put in this area here. Probably nothing, just leave it open for the rest of this collection. And as for the bottom shelf, I don't know actually. But for the top, I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I'll probably put a picture at some point or give you an update. So I was thinking about doing something with these two shelves up here, but I don't think I am at the minute because I feel like we got pretty good space now available in there that can make room for most of this stuff. But I do need to tackle what's up there, that embarrassment. But you know what, let's do that now because I think we got some things that we can throw away. All right, so most of this stuff is just empty boxes. So this is good because we can get rid of this. No need to keep things you don't need or even know that are even up there. Cause half of these boxes, I didn't even know were up there. But always open up your boxes and make sure there is nothing in them. All right, that's good. We got a pile of things that can go. As for my puzzle sausage, I think what I'm gonna do is just stick it back in here for now. And I'll probably deflate the sausage as well because I'm not currently using it. So we'll just take care of that. All right, so it's a lot better up there now. There isn't, you know, there aren't all those empty boxes that really had no need to be up there. They were just catching, they were just catching dust. So that's a good pile to get rid of. Um, now it's time to figure out the, the shelves. Now I know that advent calendar box is, is done. It's empty, there's no need for it to be there. So we can get rid of that. This Notre Dame 3D puzzle, I'm trying to figure out where I can put it in the house. There's one or two places that I probably can, but that will give me way more space. It gives me a whole extra shelf as well. Because as you can see here, things are like just piling on top of themselves. It's, it's, it's a craziness. And what do I have back here? I'm hiding, I'm hiding some embarrassment back here too. Look at this mess. I mean, it may not seem messy to some of you, but for me, it is. But let me move this table out of the way. As you can see, I'm currently working on this puzzle whilst I'm trying to organize here. Oh my God, what a mess. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. All right, let's get a move on because it's late and I'm probably not going to be doing this for much longer. At least, you know, at this moment, not in the video. The video, there's still more going on. Anyways, let's continue. Now, as for these big puzzle sets, um, sorry, I figured I'd go get my Swiffer, you know, whilst I'm pulling things out and reorganizing my small dust, right? All right, this doesn't belong there. All right. Now, as you know, this one is hanging on the wall. The box is empty. There is no poster. There's, oh, there is a poster, hello. But you know what? I'm gonna put this on the side and I think, you know, 
this may be something I just recycle in the end anyways. I, I don't know why I would want to keep this anyways. There's really no need to be hoarding empty boxes. I have to make sure I stay in that mindset. But I do have these other 1500 piece puzzles that I think would be best if I move as many as I can to the lower level. It's going to be kind of tough because I have my Echo on the shelf as well. But let's see. Uh, I have a feeling that when I work on this puzzle, this one would probably end up being one of my most hardest challenging puzzles to complete. And I'm comparing that to my experience with the Haunted Mansion. And the reason why I say that is because, I mean, look at the sky. There's so much of the same thing going on here. And it overall, it's, it's a dark puzzle. And it's a Thomas Kincaid, which for the most part, those images are really known to be very challenging in itself. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to trying this one at some point soon. But this is definitely, I think, I'm going to do this sometime this year. But honestly, why do we keep things that need to be thrown away for extended periods of time? I think for me, I just end up forgetting about it. And I guess it's just that out of sight, out of mind situation. I'm going to be honest. I'm struggling how to reorganize this and make it look pretty at the same time. I don't really want to just stack things all over the place and just kind of make it look, you know, very boxy. Does that make sense? No, that doesn't make sense. They're boxes. Um, I don't know. Let's continue. Honest opinions here. What do you guys think? Should I have it angled like this? Or should I just keep them straight like the way I've had it previously? I don't know. I'm trying to make it look very display-ish or nicer, but I don't know if this works or not. Let me know your thoughts down below. How, how would you reorganize this? But anyways, so far, geez, I have quite a collection of Disney puzzles, don't I? And that's not all because I have my official ones that I picked up from the parks here. So yeah, I love me my Disney puzzles. But anyways, the next thing I figured I was going to do was move, I think, the hometown puzzles on that empty shelf here and then kind of make this like a, you know, more of the Seiko puzzle sets. And I know I need to also reorganize this one here and sort this mess out up here as well. So let's move on. But feel free to let me know down below how you like to have your puzzles organized. Do you sort them by count, by brand, by collection? I'm curious. And maybe some of your ideas will inspire me to go about this process a little differently next time. You would think with me having so many hometown collection puzzles that I've done them before. I've actually never tried them, but I must say Heronim is an excellent artist. This is definitely going to be a collection that I'm going to try out very soon. So be on the lookout for that. And some of you actually sent me some of these, so thank you. All right, let's move on. All right, so it's another day now. Um, I really didn't do much with this, but of course I got distracted with other rooms throughout the house and started moving things around. And now this is in my room. So this is going to end up getting donated um, hopefully in the next couple days. But you know what? I figured let's just empty out most of these shelves, put everything down, and then we're going to sort through it and organize it that way, like I did the last time. So let's move on. Now, one of you sent me this question that really got me thinking, and it was, why do we keep collecting? Is the collecting as much fun as the doing? So tell me, why do you think we puzzlers go a bit crazy at times buying puzzles, especially when we have so many that we haven't even worked on? I'm going to share with you my thoughts about this a little later on, but I really do have a serious number of sets in my collection that I haven't even opened yet. And I'm also going to share with you what that number is, along with the grand total of puzzles set in my room later on. All right, there's no question that I've developed quite a collection since my last organization video because i mean i think the pile was close to this on the floor the last time but you know we still have all of this here and mind you i have some on those shelves there so yeah oh and there's some more on that shelf some in there anyways um we need to organize through all this i'm not gonna lie while sat on the floor surrounded by all my boxes I couldn't help but feel a bit overwhelmed at times, but I was glad that I was finally able to get around to this project and it also gave me an opportunity to remind myself what I had in my collection and plan out what I would like to do in the very near future. Alright, so 
I've organized it according to brand. And I know I did that the last time I organized this puzzle shelf. So, um, yeah, I don't even know where to start here. So over here, I kind of made a pile of puzzles that are obviously brand new and from brands that I haven't tried before. And then this like area here are like used ones that I have done. These I have not worked on before, which I'm looking forward to. I know I mentioned this before, but I can't wait to try out this Impossibles puzzle. And I have some other ones here that I bought way back from like some other random brands that I saw on Amazon and I only bought them because they were super cheap and I never heard of the brand before but I gotta I gotta check these out who knows there might be some hidden gems here that I don't know about oh and this one I know this I believe I picked this one up at Hobby Lobby and this is from Crown Point Graphics and it's beautiful but oh my goodness that sky is scary that looks like it's going to be super challenging and of course you know we we got to get into this when the magic puzzle company set that i picked up at walmart the last time i was there i have this aquarius harry potter puzzle that's been on display on my shelf for the longest now so yeah i need to try out this brand but so far from most of you i've heard that is not that fantastic of a of a puzzle experience so yeah we'll see about that and i got this euro graphics ones here that i picked up at hobby lobby for super dirt cheap so yeah those are a lot of the brands that i haven't done before what else do we have here i gotta do this one for my husband cubic fun sent this to me this is a queen anne's revenge 3d puzzle Oh, and it has LED lights too. So this is going to be gorgeous. But I mean, I got to find time to do that. Have my white mountain puzzles here. I only got three of those. I have a ton of buffalo sets here. All of, well, not that, that's Ibu. Um, All of these are buffalo, buffalo, buffalo. And this, not this. These are my wooden puzzles that were sent to me. But these are all my buffalo sets. So that's quite a collection. So I have a feeling it's going to take up two shelves here. We have our KI sets that I absolutely love. But going through everything here, I'm trying to figure out what I can put aside for donation. Because, I mean, honestly, this is a great image. I love it. But it's not one that I'm like, oh my god, it's got to stay in my collection. I got to make room for others, you know. I'm definitely keeping this one. That's that's a beauty. But yeah, I, I still kind of have to go through all of these and kind of figure out of the ones that I've completed, which ones are going to stay and which ones are going to go. But anyways, um, this is the Seiko pile, another huge pile. And mind you, again, this is not including all my Disney puzzles, which are mainly Seiko. So that's that's going to probably need two shelves. Oh, this one is really awesome. This was sent to me by Thurza. And if you haven't seen her channel, I'm going to link it down below. But she sent me a corkboard puzzle. And it's a Seiko 500 piece set. And I think Karen Puzzles did this one. I don't remember, honestly. But this image, like, I can't. We got so many things going on here. Like, I absolutely love this image. This is going to be so much fun. And I've never done a corkboard puzzle before. So that's going to be super interesting. Got some others here. Some older sets that I picked up at the thrift, for, thrift store. I don't know what a thrift for is. Um, thrift store. No, that was sent to me by Diane. Diane sent me that one. And those two are ones that I have not opened yet. This was, I believe, from Christmas 2022 as well, which I still haven't gotten to. And, oh, I got winter puzzles here. I know I keep saying, oh, I don't have that many winter sets, but look, I have a four-pack here. And these are beautiful, and they're Thomas Kincaid. And I think I got that at Hobby Lobby when they were half-off Christmas puzzles. So that was the super deal. We have the Spin Master sets here that I showed you recently. The one I got from the thrift store, and this is the one that's brand new, which I'm probably going to do as my first Spin Master set because, you know, it's it's new and, you know, very high likely that all the pieces will be in there. So, yeah, we got to do that at some point. These are, I put aside all my Rose Art sets, including that the Kodak puzzle that I got from the thrift store recently. These I picked up from the Dollar Tree, and these were only three dollar sets this is from their premium aisles and these were pretty good actually 
And now that I have completed the Sherlock puzzles, where are they? I've done these Sherlock puzzles that you might have seen the review. There are two of kind of like the same level of budget puzzles, I'm, I will say. But anyways, of this pile here from Sherlock, I honestly don't know if I'm going to keep these. These might end up going to the thrift store. I don't know yet. It's nothing like I'm super attached to. I'll be okay giving these two a good home. And then here we have our masterpieces pile, which none of these I'm thinking about giving away because some of them, well, most of them I haven't completed yet. And the ones that I have completed, I absolutely love. Like for example, you know, that USA shaped puzzle that I did recently, which was super fun. And I like masterpieces as well. Um, we have a small Springbok pile here. This one, Thurza also sent this to me. This is a really cute puzzle and it's from 1985, which will be super interesting. I like this. Working mothers have plenty of time for themselves. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this was the first Springbok that I did. And I did this video quite a while back now. I'll leave a link to that one down below if you haven't seen it. And I had picked this one, this one up ages ago. This is a 1,000-piece set. And I believe I got it on, like, a reduced price. It was probably, like three or four dollars for a brand new set at Hobby Lobby which if you haven't shopped at Hobby Lobby and you do have one locally I highly recommend you check out their selection and sometimes in the beginning of the month they do have 40% off all puzzles and that's a great way to stock up on sets for on the cheap and they tend to have sets that are that have a reduced sticker on it kind of like like that one there they they usually have reduced puzzles and they're dirt cheap so you best go head out there and check out what they got i have a tiny milton bradley pile here i gotta buy a new one like i said in one of my last videos so that i can compare um the quality throughout the decades we have our Ravensburger pile here i have this escape one that i haven't even opened or tried yet I don't know. I'm thinking this might be next Halloween's project. I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about that. This one I just opened up, which I am super, which, well, I won't say super excited. I'm more excited than doing this one. But yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what I think to this. And who knows? Maybe I will try this one out. I don't know. We'll see about that. Um, this was my first Robinsburger experience that you saw a, a long while back now. And I do have a Minecraft set here. That's super cool and looks like it's going to be super hard. But my daughter loves Minecraft. I love, we all love Minecraft here. We all play together. So that's that one I'm looking forward to doing at some point. And then we have Karen Puzzles 3000 piece set here that was sent to me from Connie. And then we have these sets from Dollar General that I picked up a while back. I believe this was Dollar General, actually. I think this was from one of my first haul videos now that I think about it. And I still haven't tried it. So that, you know, that says a lot about, you know, how I go about buying puzzles and doing them and, you know, buying more when I still have tons that I need to do. But I think we all kind of do that, don't we? That's okay. There's no shame. Don't feel bad about it. But yeah, um, now that I kind of have things um, organized a little bit, you know, just by brand at least, what I'm going to do now is try to figure out how I'm going to go about putting them and organizing them on the shelves here. Now, here's the thing. If nothing f exactly fits on these shelves in terms of like, you know, setting it, setting it up by brands per shelf, I did actually end up ordering a kind of a bookshelf kind of thing for the living room. We have done a lot of decluttering throughout the house in the last few weeks, and we decided to rearrange some things. And with that, I've created a big gap in the living room that is in need of some kind of shelving. And it should be coming next week. And what I plan to do with that is take those books and move them downstairs. And what that's going to do in turn is give me an entire bookshelf of free shelf space. And that means I will have all my puzzles neatly set up in my room. I know I say neatly, but who knows how long that'll be for. But anyways, with more shelf space, I don't have to feel like I have to cram everything in these shelves and just make it look very blocky. I can kind of like set it up to look a little nicer, but you know, we'll see. Anyways, let's get this all off the floor because I'm getting a little claustrophobic with all of this surrounding me. So let's move on.
But anyways, back to the question of why do we keep collecting? Well, of course, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but for me, honestly, I do find collecting just as much fun as the doing. I've gone through phases with books, statues, memorabilia throughout my whole life, and in the last several years, it's been puzzles. I've always been a collector of things that I find nostalgic, that I connect with, or that just bring me joy. And I'm sure most would agree that shopping is fun, especially when you have the spare cash, of course. And finding great deals and sales is exciting, and who the heck doesn't want to treat themselves to something every now and then? Would this look like some sort of compulsion to some people? That this is excessive? That it's unnecessary to spend what they believe is too much money on things like this? Maybe. And it's interesting because sometimes I read comments throughout social media, not just from YouTube videos that I watch, but some people get very angry about this. Like they get angry at how other people decide to spend their own money, and I honestly don't understand why. Why are they so bothered about how someone decides to spend their own money on themselves? But let's think for a second. For one, we don't know their financial situation or how they run their household. I mean, it's not even any of our business. For the most part, I'm pretty sure most people do take care of all their life necessities before spending money on the extras. And yes, there are situations where the opposite exists and that is a problem. But we shouldn't instantly assume or pass judgment on anyone. Everyone's situation is different and just about everyone has that thing that they enjoy spending money on. Whether it's that $7 cup of coffee every day or a puzzle haul every now and then. All I know is that this is the only hobby that I have and really the only thing I treat myself to. This is what I love to do and it keeps me grounded and sane. And anyways, I believe that if we work hard, we deserve to treat ourselves whenever we can. Especially if we have the spare after taking care of all of life's priorities. So if you're like me, you know, with a massive collection of puzzles or anything really, don't let others make you feel bad about it. Especially if it's not negatively affecting anyone or any situation. You do you and enjoy life. But feel free to share your thoughts about this. Alright, so this is pretty good so far. I'm, I'm happy with it. Of course, it might end up changing again at some point. I started thinking about maybe moving the Disney puzzles to the right side of the shelf so that I didn't have this box on the floor because to be honest, I thought it'd be a good idea to put it down there, but I really don't want to put it on the floor. And this side has more shelving than the middle shelf, but that's probably for another time. This little mess that's here, these are the frame boxes. This is going to go away very soon. But this pile of puzzles here is our one that I am, I'm going to donate. I'm giving those away. And here, the new shelving came for the living room finally. So, thankfully, my husband went through all his books, got rid of ones he didn't care for, and stocked up the new one. So now I have a full shelf just for me, which is fantastic. I didn't have to buy any more furniture for my room because nothing else fit in here. But I realized I still need to go through this shelf, which are my really dirt cheap puzzles from the Dollar Tree and Dollar General, basically ones that I spent a buck on. I'm going to go through these and figure out which ones I'm not keeping anymore. Most likely going to, obviously it's going to be the ones that I already completed, but hometown puzzles are going to stay here, I think. We got to dust the rest of these shelves and, oh, I got another package in my P.O. box. All right, let's get into that and let's see, we have here, ooh. Wow, I'm sorry. I've actually just been sat staring at, at this for the longest, but this was sent to me from Sam. This is a set from Masterpieces. It's 1,000 pieces. It's 34.65 by 22.09 inches when it's completed, and it's called the National Parks of America. Now, Sam knows me because I did a puzzle from Masterpieces that was shaped just like this, but it was a different image and it had to be one of my most favorite puzzle experiences ever. So the fact that I can kind of do the same puzzle shape again, but with a di different image is too exciting. I would love to just road trip all around the country and see all the sites. So, you know, this is kind of a, kind of like a preview to that. So thank you so much, Sam. Yeah, I, I'm in awe by this, by this set. This is fantastic. And it's gonna go right next to my other 
uh, masterpiece set that looks just like it. There we go. It's in its new home now, which is too exciting. Now, okay, I have to focus now. Uh, we have to go through this little shelf here. There's only just a small number of puzzle sets here. I have my, my Oregon Trail game here, which does actually work. I have this old DVD set, but it's super nostalgic to me. I don't know if any of you guys watched this back in the day, but this is the fairy tale theater collection. This was by Shelley Duvall, I think her name was. But these are all like classic fairy tales from uh, that were like done back in the day. They're live action. And it was one of my absolute favorite things to rent from the library when I was a child. But anyways, let's get back to puzzles. So let me pull these out real quick and kind of go through see what I'm gonna donate and see which ones I'm gonna keep and kind of reorganize or maybe even lower the shelf. I don't know yet. All right, so I set up a small pile here, a very small pile actually. It's only three puzzles of ones that are, I'm gonna give away. I, I did these a long time ago. I think this is actually my very first budget puzzle that I reviewed on the channel way, way back when I started. And this one we've done, we've done all these three here. And I think I'm just gonna put these on the side to go to donation because you know, we gotta make more space here and there's no point in keeping things that we've already worked on and we don't really care to do again really, but I'm sure someone else will benefit and enjoy it. I know this one was actually one that I picked up in Dollar General way back. And I haven't done a small Cardinal 500 piece set. So I'm curious how that is gonna hold up. And then I believe the rest of these here are actually from Dollar Tree, but we have different ones. This is the Cardinal set. We have the Artbox 500 piece sets. I love this one. Oh man, now I want pancakes. Anyways, focus. We also have this one here that I absolutely love. It's a little barn dance party going on. You know I'm there somewhere because look, I order pizza. I love me some pizza. But anyways, let's get these back on the shelf and kind of figure out what we're gonna do with the rest of these empty shelves here. I might think about pulling some things off this shelf to kind of, you know, space it out a bit and kind of make it look a little nicer. But you know what? We'll see, right? Anyways, let's move on, you know, before it gets late again and then it ends up being another day of doing this. Well, guys, we're getting to the home stretch now. This task took me about three days to figure out and complete. But not three days in a row. There was a number of days in between because, well, I just didn't want to do it half the time. But that's okay. And remember, don't make yourself feel bad for not completing something like this in one shot. Because, you know, life happens and sometimes you just want to sit and do nothing. And that's okay too. But anyways, I showed you a lot of sets today, so let me know down below if there's any sets you'd like to see me complete sooner rather than later. Because with all these sets, it can be quite difficult to figure out what to work on next. And that's why sometimes I need you guys to make the decision for me. All right. I think in terms of like puzzle boxes and where they're going, I think I'm pretty much done. This is great. I'm so glad this is for the most part there. But you know what? Let me kind of give you like the full look through to see like, you know, everything all together. So as we come up the stairs, don't look at my broken carpet. Um, here's the little shelf fully completed. I ended up putting the Notre Dame 3D puzzle down here and it, it looks great as you come up the stairs. We got just the books here. I did a few little things here with my Haunted Mansion pieces. And then above is we have the puzzle and we have the two pictures. That's the other one that I ordered. And it finally came in. So this area is perfect in my eyes. And then we walk into my loft, my puzzle room. So I did end up moving everything that was on this shelf up here into one. And then, you know, I, I know I said before I wasn't too sure about leaving this on the floor. So now it's here because I got this one empty and it looks better. And I'm really happy to have this Disney area set up perfectly. Then over here, the bookcase that was full of my husband's books are all downstairs now. And now this is all my stuff, which makes sense because it's my room. Anyways, the look of this might change a bit, of course, as I, you know, get some more puzzles in, but this is what it looks like for now. And then I put some little display things here, my little Professor Snape shrine there. Dollar puzzles are here. 
again, these are just going to be donated or I'm going to give them away. The frames are going to move. The frame boxes don't pretend they're not there. P pretend that whole area is not there. And this is done. I still have the Disney puzzles in the middle. The blue box is still bothering me a little bit because it's sticking out. But, you know, that's what we could do for now. But the rest of it, I'm, I'm happy with it. That's an empty spot there because that's the Schmidt puzzles. But that's because I am currently working on finishing the Alice in Wonderland whilst filming this. So I'm hoping to get this done in the next couple of days because I want to get started on my 2000 piece set in time for the Discord group challenge that we're doing. But anyways, that's everything done. I'm, I feel accomplished. I'm happy about this. And I'm also glad that I got to, you know, put aside puzzles that, you know, I can give away to a home and someone will have fun with those. But anyways, did I completely organize every little bit of my room? No. I'm not quite showing you fully what my desk looks like, but you know, I never did finish or I never started the desk, but you know what? That doesn't matter. You guys don't care to see that stuff anyways. Yeah, there's still some work to be done, but in the end, I got what I needed to get done first done. And that was go through all my puzzles, you know, put aside ones that I didn't want to keep anymore and, you know, just reorganize, reorganize what I have. And speaking of what I have, I actually did count and um, figure out which ones or how many I've completed and which ones are not completed. So here are the numbers. So in terms of what I have grand total in my entire collection, and I'm also including puzzles that I have on display because I mean, it's still part of the collection, right? But anyways, that number, after putting aside the ones I am giving away, I have 152 puzzles total in my collection. And of that number, I have only completed 26 of them. Again, this is not including the ones that I'm giving away, which are ones that I have completed already. But I mean, that doesn't make the numbers any better. But anyways, of the 26 that I've completed, six of them are on display. And how many in the end did I end up donating? You, you're probably asking. From what I'm seeing here, I only see nine of them, which is not a lot. But, you know, then again, I tend to buy puzzles that, you know, I really connect with and that I really love. So the ones that I have there, not, not to say that I didn't enjoy or connect with them, but, you know, of all of them, you know, I had to, I had to get, put some stuff aside, right? So yeah, those are my numbers. You know, it, it is what it is, right? I don't feel bad about it, but let me know down below. What, what do your numbers look like? And if you're planning to do like a whole reorganization or decluttering of your puzzle space, remember, you know, maybe one of the things you can consider if you don't actually have enough space in your puzzle space is kind of figure out how you can maximize space in other rooms in your house. In my case, I was able to utilize the small area that I have going up the stairs. And not only that, I got to sort out the living room as well, which was great because it actually helped me gain even more space in my room than what I would have if I bought something else to put in here. And to be honest, as I said a bunch of times before, I don't have any more space for furniture in my room. And I know I could put wall shelves, but then that's gonna take away space that I can use to put my puzzles on display. And that's something that I really wanna do as the months go on, because I mean, I don't know, what's a puzzle space without having some puzzles on display on the walls, right? And besides, it's something that I always wanted to do in my puzzle room anyways. Everyone's different when it comes to how they like to decorate. This is just, you know, this is just my way. But anyways, guys, this project has actually taken me days to complete. And I really need to get back into focusing on completing puzzles. I have the Schmidt puzzle still on my table and I haven't really gotten as much time as I wanted to work on it. So now that I'm done with the reorganizing, I can now fully put my full attention on it. So be on the lookout for that review soon because as I have said, before, and if you're new here, Schmidt was one brand that I had been really looking forward to trying, so I'm excited to share with you my experience. And another thing that I got coming up soon, um, which I just realized is going to definitely cause me to rearrange the other shelf that I have now with puzzles, I have quite a big shopping haul. 
video coming up. It's a shop with me and a haul. And one of the stores is one that I have not been to in a long time. So I'm looking forward to sharing that one with you very soon because I picked up a number of brands that I do not have. And these are much better quality sets. Well, at least I'm hoping, you know, considering the price I paid. But anyways, if you guys are new here and you want to see what I have to say on any of my upcoming puzzles, be sure that you're subscribed so that, you know, you can hear what I have to say about my experience. And if you'd like to share what your puzzle space looks like or, you know, what kind of ways you like to organize your puzzle space and you'd like to make some new puzzle friends, I do have a puzzling community that you can join. And I'm going to leave a link to that video down below so that you can check it out. But anyways, guys, I hope you didn't mind all my ramblings throughout the video. Thank you again for all of your support. Hope you're all doing well, and I will see you in the next one.